Hi everybody. Uh, I got to catch up on where we're at. It's Saturday morning. We're in the three-quarter ton to 2,500. Betty White still broke down. Uh, we are going out on the road today. Like two days ago, the 444 broke down. He was headed into a job site. Truck started vibrating. Well, no. Before he got to the job site, the truck started vibrating. Vibrated about an hour. Not real bad, he said, he said, but all of a sudden it got really bad. And, uh, when it got real bad, all of a sudden the truck stopped moving. He lost all his gears, lost his clutch. So he shut it down. And he thought maybe he just lost it on the low side so he could fire it back up. See if he get it in the high side so he could limp it home. And went to fire it back up. And uh, the starter just went zing. So he called me up. Told me what was going on. And as soon as he said about it, I knew exactly what happened on that thing. The 855s, when they get some miles on them, they'll start, you get a vibration to them, and it'll break the flywheel off. It'll break all the bolts off, spit the flywheel off, and you'll lose your clutch because it all slings back against the transmission. And I know I'm going to start an argument on this. Uh, I always do. Guys will get on. Will say, and I've, I've dealt with it many a times. They'll say, uh, whoever put the clutch in last time got on the flywheel bolts with uh, too big of an impact, fractured the bolts. Or they'll say uh, improper torque. One of the bolts came loose. Or they put lube on the threads and over torque the bolt, snap the bolt off. Which is fine. And I've dealt with with other guys. They've had me work on them, and they've, that was what they insisted on. And I tell them flat out, that's fine. We'll do it the way you want to. And uh, in two months, we'll do it again. And we do. It spits the flywheel off again. A lot of times, when it spits it off the second time, it normally breaks something in there. Uh, and then I've had them argue with me the second time that it spit it off because it wobbled on the back of the crankshaft, made the crank uneven. And it takes some talking to to get them to, to actually listen to you. If you can put it all back together, you're going to end up breaking a crankshaft gonna break your cam or when it comes apart it's gonna destroy the back of the crankshaft uh, when an 855 spits off the flywheel put a dampener on them as a sure sign that the dampener went out and you can look at the dampeners and a lot of times you're not gonna see where the dampener failed one sure sign of a failed dampener is if you see damper is all painted and you have a spot of rust and it doesn't matter if it's old rust new rust you see rust on it that's a sign that a damper failed if you can't see where it's been leaking or anything but uh that rust is caused from a hot spot where the damper is rubbing and it they fail so we're going to go down. He's got most of the airlines off, but he ended up having it towed to his house because it's being loaded and it saved him a little bit of money instead of towing it all the way to my shop. So we're going to go down and we're going to pull the transmission in his driveway. I got the transmission jack in the back of the truck. Threw a bunch of, this thing already has tools in it, but I threw a couple more tools in it so I can drill out the broken bolts. I'm pretty sure that's what happened to it. And uh, I figured I'd take you guys along with it. So. If you break off 
your flywheel bolts in an 855. Spend the money for the damn rod. Don't go buy a used one. Put a new one on it. Uh, let's go down and see if this is what's happened to it. I told him just go ahead and start pulling everything apart because that's... I would pretty much guarantee it broke flywheel bolts off. So, you guys, hang on. We'll get there and we'll be there in about 40 minutes. So, I'll get back with you. See ya. Look, everybody, it's Hershey Park. Smells like chocolate. Oh, I gotta turn this down. I don't wanna get a copyright. Hey dude, how you doing? I got thrown out of Hershey Park in 2011. We had a Hurricane Sandy come through. And I was down here working on equipment. Uh, hurricane came through. They were putting a new roller coaster in. And there was an excavator that was sitting down in a creek. They moved, the, they changed the creek bed so that they could put this roller coaster in and they figured that since they diverted the stream that the water was going to stay the way they diverted it and they left the machinery sitting down in the creek well when the hurricane hit everything flooded and the machinery that was down in the creek bottom the, the water overtook their diversion diversion and it flooded everything out so i showed up with the service truck uh drove right into the park uh, i mean i drove right past the dipping dot stand right down inside and i was down there draining fluids draining oil pulling injectors turning motors over to get water out of them so we get them all fired back up get everything moved and i was there for hours and I'm like man I gotta pee and I had another guy with me he was actually my boss and uh I'm down in this creek bottom standing up on top of this machine I'm like yo I, I gotta go take a leak he's like yeah wh whatever it's over there working and it goes like 45 minutes and I'm like yo I gotta go to the bathroom oh okay whatever so and there's police and security guards, construction workers, all over the place. So, I'm like, I can't, I can't deal with this anymore. So I go up to the service truck and I open up one of the service doors. And I tuck in behind the service door and I'm standing there taking a leak. My boss yells over, he sees me standing there peeing. And nobody, everybody's doing their own job. You know, nobody's paying attention to me. He stands on top of the excavator and goes, yo, Grimmy, you can't pee in the middle of the park. I was doing fine until he said something. Oh my God, were they mad? But oh well. But yeah, there's a story of Hershey Park for you. All right, guys, I'm still on my way to get this tranny out. Have fun. All right, guys, that's what it looks like when they break off. We gotta do some cleanup work on this one. And this has a new bell housing in it with a new clutch new flywheel with old war wounds so he's only had this truck a couple months lincoln how many runs do you have on this one about six shifts six shifts on it so like i said two months they fly apart they got six shifts on it since he purchased this one so the dampener's off. 
and we'll get her fixed up. Some link or something popped up? He was on something? Hey, Adam. Lincoln knows that this truck's on. Just, just so that you know. <laughs> hey, guys. I would like to get you more footage on that one, but we had a job to do. And, uh, it did. It broke the, broke the bolts off of it. Like it's all in the video. I don't know if you can see it. It had a new flywheel in it, brand new clutch, new transmission, new bell housing on it. Everything was Loctited in it. Uh, there were no flywheel bolts in it. There was some old scar marks on that crankshaft. That thing spit a flywheel off just prior to him buying it. So, that's what I'm telling you. When you have that issue, put a dampener on it. That's your problem. Uh, the dampener, the date code on that dampener was a 2000. So, you know, 19 years. It's past his expected life. But no, Lincoln's cool with that. Uh, I wanted you all to see that. It's not something that you run into a lot. I've run into it more times than I would like to. But I'm just speaking from experience on that. Spend extra money, put a dampener on it, and... You don't have to do it again. So, guys, I gotta get home. I got an hour drive. But everything's good. We got it out. Lincoln did a good job on He already started it. He had most, most of the airlines off of it. Had it drained down. Had a PTO off of it. So, uh, you know, we're gonna do some, uh, some repairs. We gotta repair the crankshaft a little bit. Gotta get the parts and move it back down to put it back together. All right, everybody. You guys have a good day. See ya.